This morning on CBS 2 News, police in Uvalde, Texas, facing more criticism for their response to a school shooting last month. Why officials believe they had the manpower to act sooner than they did. Plus, Caldwell welcoming a new police chief. What he says his goal will be as he gets ready to step into his new role. Plus, fighting fire with weeds? The plants crews in Idaho are hoping will help combat fire danger. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us this Wednesday. A live look from downtown Boise on this June 22nd, 2022. Yeah, summer solstice has come and gone. We are officially kicking off summer and it looks like first light out there this morning yeah. is also agreeing with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't see much from the studio camera, but boy, starting to see a beautiful scene already taking shape over the Long Valley. Uh, for hints of first light, still seeing some of the stars out. These cameras, the Prism Camera Network that we're seeing, which is uh, the Tamarack Summit's a part of. Uh, beautiful start to the day. Boy, they just are able to capture uh, the scene this morning uh, with what little light that we do have. Boise sitting at 57 degrees, McCall 43. We're 53 in Ontario. Good morning to you. 48 in Mountain Home. Clouds and radar showing that we're quiet here if we look up towards Idaho. But I wanted to point out there's some of the monsoonal moisture starting to take shape in southwestern portions of the country as uh, a ridge of high pressure is helping sweep up some of that subtropical moisture. And models are hinting we could see a little bit uh, in portions of southern Idaho. Not today as far as uh, any showers go. We might see a few clouds here and there over some of the southern mountain areas. But there's a potential Thursday afternoon and evening we could see some scattered if not isolated showers, possibly some thunderstorms from some of that monsoonal moisture moving up. We also have northwest flow in place across the valley or increasing Thursday, Friday, so should keep a lot of that moisture swept southeast of us uh, during that time. Uh, hot temperatures in store for Wednesday, 80 degrees by noon. We should hit 91 this afternoon for our high. Sarah. Whew, all right. Thank you, Nate. Summer is here and the temperatures are definitely reflecting that. It is 502 on your Wednesday. We bring you team traffic all morning long. This is a live look out there this morning. Everything is moving along on your Wednesday. Everything clear on both our main roads and secondary roads. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, the head of the Texas Department of Public Safety is blasting the police response to the Uvalde mass shooting. He says there were enough armed officers in the school hallway three minutes after the gunman walked into the school. But police, they waited 74 minutes before breaching what is now said to be an unlocked door. The only thing stopping a hallway of dedicated officers from entering room 111 and 112 was the on-scene commander who decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. In Uvalde Tuesday, the city council unanimously voted against giving Uvalde police chief Arredondo, who is a city or who is a council member, a leave of absence from appearing at public meetings. Now, in the meantime, Senate negotiators, they introduced a gun safety bill that they say can pass this week with bipartisan support. Now, it would toughen some federal gun laws and provide billions for school safety and mental health programs. Now, 10 Republicans say they'll vote for this bill based on that framework. Legislators, they hope to have the bill signed into law by the president before they break on July 4th for recess. Well, here in the Treasure Valley, Caldwell has a new police chief. Rex Ingram says he's looking forward to bringing a new perspective to the Caldwell Police Department and lead it through this challenging time. He says his goal is to restore community trust. I would tell those folks that help is on the way that I need to come in and, and really evaluate what systems are working, what systems are not working, and put people, put the right people in the right places to make a difference and to really collaborate with the community. Now, one officer has been indicted by the feds. That's Joseph Hoadley. He's accused of using excessive force and then lying to cover it up. Now, the last chief, Frank Wyatt, retired amid the FBI's investigation into the police department. Ingram, he starts his new role at the start of next month. Well, a high school student is trying to make a mark by running for the Boise School Board. Now, Shiva Rajbandir is a senior at Boise High School. He's already a part of student government. Now, he's running to be a trustee. 
I think it's really important that there is a student on the school board. 14% of the largest districts in the country already have students on the school board, and so this wouldn't be a, a new thing. Um, and I'm confident that uh, the, the voting public also believes that there should be a student, a student representation on the school board. Yeah, student representation. Now, one of Shiva's main priorities, if elected, it's to address mental health issues in the school district. Now, the school board election is September 6th. Well, as temperatures rise, so does fire danger. The Bureau of Land Management is using a plant when it comes to fire preparations. And now in some places, this plant is considered a harmful weed. But right here in the Treasure Valley, it just might stop a fire. Michaela Elich explains. In the heat of the summer, sagebrush becomes highly flammable, but cheatgrass is the big problem. It's spread all over our public lands, and once it's dry, it burns fast. What happens is it leads to more fires starting just because of how easily it is to ignite the cheatgrass. And so once you have more fires starting, more brush is lost and the more cheatgrass comes in. This is why the Bureau of Land Management is creating unique fuel breaks using another species of plant. We've identified roadway systems um, and started uh, to put fuel brakes throughout this whole network of roads in order to create areas where uh, if a wildfire should occur, we can kind of keep that wildfire smaller and more com compartmentalized uh, amongst the road system. That plant is kochia. And we use forage kochia, uh, a plant that is stays green long uh, quite a while into the summer and is uh, pretty fire resistant. The BLM is planting kochia in fuel breaks that will eventually spread approximately 274 miles across Idaho. Between the front of the Danskin Mountain Range area and the and the freeway uh, I-84, we've identified a network of road systems and implemented fuel breaks in those areas. So when we do have fires in that area, hopefully we'll be able to keep them smaller and to keep everybody safe and to get them put out. Some cool stuff. Now, as temperatures do rise, even in the smallest of sparks can start a vegetation fire. So you want to make sure all chains are secure on your car if you're using them. Make sure to maintain your brakes and don't drive onto dry grass or brush. Now, it's been a relatively quiet fire year so far here in Idaho, but that's not the case everywhere. The Edgewood Fire in San Mateo County, California, it's already forced evacuations and injured a firefighter. Now, firefighters were not getting any help from Mother Nature as temperatures soared into the 90s, even the low 100s. So this is a very atypical day in San Mateo County. We are used to that kind of onshore flow with the fog that comes in in the late afternoon. But the thing that concerns us is until we get some, um, some either relative humidities that go up or some containment that goes around, uh, we feel as though the, the potential is still there that the, this fire could grow. Crews say they saw flare-ups across the Bay Area yesterday. Now, you can see in the video, a business owner is actually taking matters into his own hands until those fire crews arrive. Now, crews say they are keeping an eye on winds this morning and later this week. The potential for a dry lightning to strike is high. St. Luke's wants to keep kids safe around the water this summer as things are heating up. Once again, it's giving money to Boise to provide free life jackets to kids. It's a cool program we do. Now, they held a giveaway at Sports River, Idaho, or Idaho River Sports, rather. The director of Parks and Rec says since the beginning, five years ago, they've provided over a thousand life jackets to kids. This isn't your old um, inner tube around the neck type of uh, horse collar uh, type of life jacket. These are uh, state of the art. Uh, the, the best life jackets we could find on the market that we're providing for kids. If you did miss yesterday's event, you can still go to Idaho River Sports. Just ask for a free children's life jacket. I love that they do that. Um, they're yeah. really everywhere. I mean, I know that we talk a lot about my, my paddle boarding, but um, yeah. I, I frequent Barclay Bay. They have them up there, the marina up in um, up in Boise County. Yeah, the life jacket yeah. loan, loaner program is amazing, especially if you if you forget one by chance. Or I mean, yeah. we actually visited the water park yesterday, and we didn't have a life jacket. We we're like, oh, it's at a friend's house. We don't have time to go get it. They have them there for kids to borrow if you need one. So no, it's nice. Nice to keep kids safe and uh, adults as well. You need your life jackets, not just yeah. the kiddos. And it's hot, finally hot enough. I think get out and enjoy yeah. some of the water. You said water park and yeah. my eyes kind of lit up yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it was fun. Ready for we, uh, some we water. We soaked up the sunshine and today's even hotter than yesterday. Here's a look at some of the highs this afternoon. So yeah, it's a bit of a scorcher out there this afternoon. Temperatures trending above normal. Uh, yeah, we typically expect, uh, we're in the summer season now, we expect hot temperatures, but normally we're just in the mid 80s this time of uh, year. So low 90s, going to feel a bit toasty out there. 92 Mountain Home. 93 expected in Ontario, could hit 94 Harper. 77 for McCall. 
temperatures at Idaho City 85, 75, and 70. So still comfortable in some of those northern mountain areas as far as our daytime highs go, but yeah, getting toasty down here in the valley. So yeah, we're turning up the heat today. I talked about the temperatures getting to 90s uh, today. We do drop, fortunately, a little bit tomorrow, Friday. Northwest flow is going to bring some uh, northwest winds about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Storm passes north of us, drops us back to average highs by Friday. But then temperatures, we turn up the heat even more. So we're just getting a taste or a tease of some of the 90s. It's going to be a scorcher next week. So uh, future cast to get mentioned some of the monsoonal flow coming up from the south. So note our folks to the south in Utah, Nevada, seeing more active weather as we get into Thursday than we're going to be seeing. But models are continuing to show just a little bit of monsoonal moisture generating a possible shower or thunderstorm for southern highland areas, the Magic Valley and southeast Idaho as we get into Friday before that northwest flow, that storm passing to the north of us ends up helping usher that moisture off to the east of us, keeps us clear into uh, the weekend. So here's a look at the temperature trend into the weekend. Yeah, we hit 91 today. We do drop back down, as I mentioned, to average highs Friday, 84, sharply rebounding to 91 on Saturday, mid 90s Sunday, and there's a chance we could have our first triple digit day next week. We'll kind of we'll savor that one for the next weather hit, I guess. But it's going to be yeah. hot next week. Yeah, summer is here. Mother Nature yeah. cranking it up. It's like it, it flipped a switch. We knew yesterday was solstice. We were cold <laughs> over the weekend, it felt like. And then now it's just, it's just hot and it looks like it's going to stay hot. You know, I love it. Try to keep cool out there, folks. Let's take a live look out this yeah. morning because everything pretty mild, Nate. Yeah, very. It's, it's pretty comfortable outside this morning. Yeah, yeah looking mad. looking good out there too. our roads um, looking pretty, pretty light as far as the morning commute for your Wednesday. Hope y'all are having a good one as well. But yeah, not much to talk about for our main roads, secondary roads. Everything is running smoothly. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on news. KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, parts of Yellowstone ready to reopen this morning. How people are preparing. But the rest of Yellowstone, it'll need some time before it's ready. How long and how much it may take to completely restore the park. Wow, crazy video out of Yellowstone. All right, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 150 million of these are sold every year in America. Now, most are sold between May and July. Ooh, that's a hard one, guys. Okay, the answer was American flags. Okay, good, should have guessed. The 4th of July, guys. We are celebrating our independence. Now, for today's question, in a new survey, 7% of people say they haven't done this in more than 10 years, a decade. All right, folks, what is it? Five fifteen on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Local forecast. This one for Idaho City. Temperatures today about 85 for the high. It's going to be a nice and warm day. Clear skies all day long. Tonight, uh, again, still mostly clear. 52 for the overnight low. We're just a touch cooler tomorrow. Might be a bit breezy as well. We're going to switch to more of a northwest flow as the storm passes north of Idaho City on Thursday. Thank you, Nate. Yellowstone National Park is partially reopening this morning after being closed for more than a week following historical flooding. Now, Kelly Vaughn from our Sinclair sister station, she's in West Yellowstone, Montana, as the gateway communities and tourists are preparing for the park to reopen. Locals tell me this past week it has been like a ghost town, but it is finally starting to pick up as tourists are ready to get inside the park. But remember, only the southern half of the park will reopen. So to reduce capacity, they're using an alternating license plate system. So only cars with plates ending in an even number can get into the park on Wednesday. We're going to go scope it out. Holly Claiborne and her family came all the way from Albany, Kentucky, and they are prepared for the park's new alternating license plate system. I requested an even from the rental company. Business owners are as excited as the tourists for the park to reopen. Sergey Plesko is a manager of three businesses in West Yellowstone. He says most of the local businesses hire students from overseas to work for the summer. And everybody has promised contracts and jobs and they have to offer hours. So uh, it's a good thing that the park is reopening tomorrow. Yeah. Every summer in Yellowstone is different, but he's hoping it could be a busy one, especially since the park is celebrating its 150th anniversary. Now, it won't be long until most of the northern loop of Yellowstone is open as well. That's set to happen in two weeks, months earlier than expected, after the Federal Highway Administration gave Yellowstone $50 million to make repairs. Reporting in West Yellowstone, I'm Kelly Vaughn. Back to you. 
Thank you, Kelly. Now, Yellowstone officials say it could take years to rebuild the national park, and it may cost around $1 billion. Now, officials say they're still looking at the scope of that damage, but so far, the most damage seems to be the roads, especially the highway connecting the park's north entrance to its office. Now, the goal is to for construction with less impact to the park, limiting the season from spring thaw until our first snowfall. Officials say rerouting the road could be a there could be a chance to better protect the Gardner River, fish, and other species that live there. Yeah, hearts go out to that community, yeah. definitely. Remind, okay. Reminder, Mother Nature's, I guess, telling them it's time to make some changes, I guess, yeah. for, for future potential flooding or whatever might come yeah. their way. So. No, and speaking of some changes, I know oh. I kind of want to jump the gun this morning. <laughs> okay. And it is, yeah. it's a really special day here at CBS2. Um, it's Nate's official day here with us. Last and official day. Yeah, yeah. last official uh, day. Kind of kept it under the, uh, the radar. We, uh, the, f the family and I, we've been in Idaho for seven years. It's been yeah. a nice ride, East Idaho, for a few years, and then five almost here in, in the Treasure Valley. And so uh, we are from Utah, and we yes. have an opportunity to go back home uh, with a uh, ABC affiliate station there. And so we are yeah. going to take the ride. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's been fun, and we're going to take the plunge. And uh, we've, we've loved it. This has been our home and have great friends and family. And, uh, yeah. Well, not family, but friends have become family, I guess I should say. So we'll talk more about this a little bit we later. Will, yeah, we will, we will. But it, it's been a pleasure uh, yeah, working with you. Fun. And so excited for him to finally be back home you know, with yeah. your family. And if you watch ABC4 down in Utah, yeah, you'll be able to see this guy's face. That's right. So. And if not, you're going to continue you to see Sarah and whomever <laughs> takes our places. And it's it's been a fun ride. And I'm glad Sarah's here to take the reins and, and help lead the show on. So thanks for watching and keep watching. So. Yeah. It won't be the same without you, Nate. Right. Okay, well, let's <laughs> yeah. move on with weather because because yeah, it is going to be toasty today. Yeah. Definitely slap on the sunscreen. <laughs> You're heading out. Yeah, lots of sunshine, hot to grab uh, bottles of water, keep you cool out there. Certainly need to prepare for temperatures uh, back in the 90s. So uh, this morning we're starting off on a nice note. Get out early, get that jog in. Uh, temperatures are pretty comfortable. 57 right now in Boise, clear skies. Southeast winds at seven miles an hour, so pretty light. But uh, yeah, we're starting to see hints of first light here from the studio camera downtown. And we're going to continue to see the clear skies all throughout the day today. So from 91 today, 84 is average, so we are trending almost 10 degrees above normal today. Northwest flow is going to help chip away some of the, the extreme heat or the hotter temperatures. I guess this isn't necessarily extreme heat until maybe Monday when we're at 99. But breezy winds, 10 to 15 miles an hour. Thursday, Friday, dropping us to the mid 80s again on Friday. So back to average highs. And then high pressure rebuilds over the weekend and into next week. And that's really going to drive our temperatures way up to 99 degrees on Monday. Maybe the century mark. Maybe your phones are saying the century mark. So yeah, it's going to be a scorcher to kick off next week. And then we'll slowly cool off uh, into the middle of the week next week as well. 77 in the mountains today. Comfortable temperatures, low 70s or highs. 73 on Thursday. 72 on Friday, breezy winds in the mountain valleys as well. Uh, warmer temperatures on Saturday, but still gorgeous, upper 70s for highs. And then temperatures are getting warm in our mountain valleys as well with mid 80s expected Monday, Tuesday next week. So that's going to be kind of the peak. Uh, now I mentioned over the southern highland areas, might see a shower or thunderstorm later tomorrow evening, but up north it's pretty quiet. Roland will be tracking all the changes to the forecast. He'll have updates today at 4 o'clock right here on CBS2. Yeah, even the mountains are looking picture perfect. Yeah, yeah if you don't like the 90s, you can always escape about 10 degree temperature Ooh. differences up in the mountain valleys, but certainly be nice. Yeah, no, I'm going to have to climb up there and get up to the mountains this weekend. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys do too. But as far as this morning, very mild out there, running uh, very light as far as Wednesday morning, seeing quite a bit of first light actually as you're heading out the door this morning. So let's take a live look out there. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, that first light, good to see a sign that summer is here, folks. Everything is looking good, moving on along this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, preparing for new variants of coronavirus. What's being done to protect you? And later, keeping kids safe this summer, where you can go pick up a free life jacket. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning.
524 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. The newest variant of coronavirus could have us headed for a future surge. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus shares what's being done to offer us protection against it. Hey there, everybody. So you just recovered from BA2 or BA3. What does it mean for BA4 or 5 as these newer variants start to move into circulation and replace the early strains? Here's what infectious disease specialists say you can expect. First up, expect new guidance on possibly a fourth booster for all in the coming weeks. These newer BA4 and 5 variants appear to be just different enough from the early Omicron strains that the U.S. Surgeon General said today. We are certainly looking at uh, the possibility of a, a booster shot in the fall for the broader population. FDA vaccine advisors are scheduled to meet on these updated COVID-19 vaccines on June 28th. Right now, the current fourth shot is only recommended for those 50 and older four months after their most recent shot. Second thing to expect from these newer subvariants, according to Cedarville University's Dr. Zach Jenkins, is that if you get BA4 or 5, you aren't likely to be hospitalized from it. Omicron seems to have, in a way, almost neutered some of the uh, capabilities of COVID at large. Dr. Jenkins says we all likely now have what's called population-based immunity, which means when it comes to BA4 and 5, it may not protect against symptomatic infection, but there seems to be some correlation with protecting against severe disease. Finally, expect that the army of ways to stop you from getting sick, from antiviral pills to mask recommendations, are still going to be recommended as these newer variants take over. And truth be told, as this tends to move through the population, there are a lot of people in lots of groups. It's hard to make general statements about what the best thing might be for everyone. This is one of the reasons protection always considered a layering process. It's never just one single step. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a new gun safety bill making its way through Congress. How soon it could be passed. Plus, let's take a look at what's coming up tonight for your primetime lineup at 7 o'clock. We have The Price is Right after all your favorites. You can join Brent Hunsaker and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. In a new survey, 7% of people say they haven't done this in more than 10 years. Okay, folks, what do you think it is? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, police in Uvalde, Texas, facing more criticism for their response to the school shooting last month. Why officials believe they had the manpower to act sooner than they did. Plus, Caldwell welcoming a new police chief. What he says his goal will be as he gets ready to step into the role. Plus, fighting fire with weeds? The plant crews in Idaho hope will help combat fire danger. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. All right, happy Wednesday, folks. Uh, made it to hump day. Let's kind of break down the forecast as we start off your day, though. Checking in with those frosted weather weeds. Temperature-wise, we're 50s this morning. Pretty comfortable. Uh, overnight lows, usually about 54 or so, so we're about average. Should be about 63 at 8 o'clock. Seeing first light already. Sunrise at 6.04 this morning, so very early. Uh, we're going to see clear skies in our neck of the woods today. I uh, wanted to pinpoint or highlight south of our area. In, in fact, uh, just along portions of southern Utah, starting to see a little bit of moisture creep up from the south. So this is that time of year when we start to see some of that monsoonal flow inch northward around high pressure ridges that get situated along the Great Basin or the Four Corner region. And we're expecting a little bit of that moisture to creep into some of our southern highland areas. Today's going to be quiet. We'll start to see a little bit of a northwest flow pick up into tomorrow. So a hot day today. Tomorrow, some of those showers could generate some thunderstorms over some of the southern mountain areas. Should stay just south and east of the Treasure Valley, though, as northwest flow is going to be in place. It'll help moderate our temperatures a little bit as well, because today is going to be a hot one. Here's a look at that adventure cast. Yeah, maybe you need to grab the paddleboard, head out to Quinn's Pond or somewhere to stay cool. We're already 63 as you head out at 8. 80 degrees by noon, 84 is average, so we're almost at our average high by lunchtime. And it's going to be a bit of a toasty one, 91 for a high this afternoon. Sarah. Ooh, it is going to get hot. Thank you, Nate. 
CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything moving along this morning. Not much to report. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. The head of the Texas Department of Public Safety is blasting the police response to the Uvalde mass shooting. He says there were enough armed officers in the school hallway three minutes after the gunman walked into the school. But police, they waited 74 minutes before breaching what is now said to be an unlocked door. The only thing stopping a hallway of dedicated officers from entering room 111 and 112 was the on-scene commander who decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. In Uvalde Tuesday, the city council voted unanimously against giving Uvalde school police chief Arundondo, who is a council member, a leave of absence from appearing at public meetings. Now, in the meantime, Senate negotiators introduced a gun safety bill that they say can pass with this week with bipartisan support. Now, it would toughen some federal gun laws and provide billions of dollars for both school safety and mental health programs. Ten Republicans say they'll vote for a bill based on that framework. Now, legislators hope to have the bill signed into law by the president before they break for recess. That's on July 4th. Here in the Treasure Valley, Caldwell has a new police chief. Now, Rex Ingram says he's looking forward to bringing a new perspective to the Caldwell Police Department and lead it through a challenging time. He says his goal is to restore community trust. I would tell those folks that help is on the way that I need to come in and, and really evaluate what systems are working, what systems are not working, and put people, put the right people in the right places to make a difference and to really collaborate with the community. Now, one officer has been indicted by the feds. That's Joseph Hoadley. He's accused of using excessive force and then lying to cover it up. Now, last week, the last chief, rather, Frank Wyatt, he retired amid the FBI's investigation into the police department. Now Ingram starts his new role at the start of next month. A high school student is trying to make his mark by running for the Boise School Board. Now Shiva Raj Bandari is a senior at Boise High School. He's already a student in student government, and now he's running to be a trustee. I think it's really important that there is a student on the school board. 14% of the largest districts in the country already have students on the school board, and so this wouldn't be a, a new thing. Um, and I'm confident that uh, the, the voting public also believes that there should be a student, a student representation on the school board. Now, one of Shiva's main priorities, if elected, it's to address mental health issues in the school district. Now, the school board election is set for September 6th. As temperatures rise, so does fire danger. We know this. And the Bureau of Land Management, they're actually using a plant in their fire preparation. Now, in some places, this plant, it's actually considered a harmful weed. But right here, it might just stop a fire. CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains. In the heat of the summer, sagebrush becomes highly flammable. But cheatgrass is the big problem. It's spread all over our public lands. And once it's dry, it burns fast. What happens is it leads to more fires starting just because of how easily it is to ignite the cheatgrass. And so once you have more fires starting, more brush is lost and the more cheatgrass comes in. This is why the Bureau of Land Management is creating unique fuel breaks using another species of plant. We've identified roadway systems um, and started uh, to put fuel breaks throughout this whole network of roads in order to create areas where uh, if a wildfire should occur, we can kind of keep that wildfire smaller and more com compartmentalized uh, amongst the road system. That plant is kochia. And we use forage kochia, uh, a plant that is stays green long uh, quite a while into the summer and is uh, pretty fire resistant. The BLM is planting kochia in fuel breaks that will eventually spread approximately 274 miles across Idaho. Between the front of the Danskin Mountain Range area and the and the freeway uh, I-84, we've identified a network of road systems and implemented fuel breaks in those areas. So when we do have fires in that area, hopefully we'll be able to keep them smaller and to keep everybody safe and then get them put out. Now, as temperatures rise, even the smallest spark can start a vegetation fire. So make sure that all your chains are secure on your car if you're using them. Maintain your brakes and don't drive onto dry grass or brush. Now, it's been a relatively quiet year so far in Idaho. That's not the case everywhere. The Edgewood Fire in San Mateo County, California, it's forcing evacuations and even injured a firefighter. 
Now, firefighters were not getting any help from Mother Nature as temperatures. They soared into the 90s, even low triple digits. So this is a very atypical day in San Mateo County. We are used to that kind of onshore flow with the fog that comes in in the late afternoon. But the thing that concerns us is until we get some, um, some either relative humidities that go up or some containment that goes around, uh, we feel as though the, the potential is still there that the, this fire could grow. Now, crews say they saw flare-ups across the Bay Area yesterday. You can even see in this video a homeowner taking matters into his own hands before fire crews arrived. Now, crews say they are keeping an eye on wind this morning and later this week as they have the potential for dry lightning strikes. Well, here at home, St. Luke's wants to help keep kids safer in the water this summer. Once again, it's giving money to Boise to provide free life jackets for our kiddos. Now, they held a giveaway at Idaho River Sports. The director of Parks and Rec says since this began just five years ago, they're providing over a thousand life jackets. This isn't your old um, inner tube around the neck type of uh, horse collar uh, type of life jacket. These are uh, state of the art. Uh, the, the best life jackets we could find on the market that we're providing for kids. Now, if you did miss yesterday's event, you can still go to Idaho River Sports and just ask for a free children's life jacket. <laughs> yeah, people are going to be wanting to hit the water today, Nate, after seeing the temperatures on our yeah, seven it's gonna day. Be, it's going to be slammed at uh, a lot of the parks and areas that offer uh, a little yeah. bit of ways to cool off. Uh, I know we were uh, itching to get out and enjoy some of the summer activities. Yesterday we did hit one of the pools. Uh, today's going to be even a better day where it's just going to be downright toasty. Maybe a little hot on the asphalt. It was kind of hot on the asphalt no. for your feet. Good thing to keep, keep in mind, yeah, too. Yeah. Kids, kids might not realize it till they're on it. It's too hot. So uh, enjoy that today, though. Get outside. Enjoy the sunshine. Uh, we know uh, in summertime we're going to get quite a bit of sunny days. Right now we're looking at uh, if we've got wind speeds. There we go. Uh, light winds in store today. So we've got hot temperatures coupled with light winds. Not going to be a terrible day overall. We've been talking about some of the fire conditions south and west of us in California with some of the uh, forecasts that we do have in place. We're not going to be too far until we're starting to talk about extreme fire conditions as things are going to really start to dry out uh, with these hot temperatures. We've got some blustery, if not breezy winds tomorrow. I wanted to highlight that northwest winds are going to pick up on Thursday out of the northwest due to a storm passing north of us, and this is going to help cool our temperatures off just a little bit. We'll be closer to average by the end of the week. Uh, there is a small chance, though, for some isolated showers and storms. You kind of saw those flare up with some of the model data there. Could see some over the southern highlands, the Magic Valley area tomorrow, and so that could generate some stronger wind gusts near storms that do form. Uh, we're expecting pretty quiet weather for the Treasure Valley, though. A lot of it's going to stay south and east of us. Uh, with turning up the temperatures, as I mentioned yesterday, we're in the low to mid 80s. We should be hitting the low 90s today. Temperatures falling back down to the mid to low uh, 80s by Thursday, Friday. I shouldn't say low 80s. We're 87 tomorrow and about 84 on Friday, so still mid 80s uh, by the end of the week. And then we crank up the heat again even hotter by the weekend. Let's kind of talk you through some of that monsoonal flow coming up from the south. So again, the monsoon season for us tends to be in late June, July. We see this high pressure ridge that tends to form along the four corner area or the Great Basin sweep up subtropical moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. Some of that can trickle into southern Idaho and it looks like we could see a little bit of storms uh, develop in portions of southern Idaho. As I mentioned Thursday late afternoon and evening and then that northwest flow should help push all the moisture sweep it out of here for the rest of the week. Just help drop our temperatures a little bit. In fact, the temperature trend. Yeah, we're not swinging too much. Uh, 91 today to 84 by Friday. Back to 96 on Sunday. Hottest of the season so far. Might have right. a triple digit uh, day next week. We'll keep our eyes on that one. Yeah, crazy to think it's already <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. here. You know, that's that's really hot. <laughs> Usually we get oh about five, six triple digit days in a summer. So yeah. be, uh, if we already get one late June, I guess we'll be on our way. Yeah, make sure that air conditioning. Just yeah. make sure it's checked, ready to go before we hit yeah, the potential. Change out the air digits. filter. Maybe it's been a while, right? Let the let the, uh, the fan breathe a little bit better. Yes, always a good thing to yeah. keep in mind. I need to do that too, Nate. Now that you say that. All right, <laughs> let's take a live look outside this morning. We're already seeing that first light. Everything looking good on the roadways, but. For now, uh, main roads, secondary roads looking good. Everything is moving along this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. All right, now it's time for our question of the day. The question is, in a new survey, 7% of people, just 7%, say they haven't done this in more than 10 years. Mm. 
That's, uh, that's not too many, uh, that's a pretty small percentage, fortunately. Uh, my first ten initial years. guess, I was saying uh, in the background, maybe it's like work out. Maybe you haven't done that in 10 years. <laughs> like ran a mile yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I had another guess. Uh, someone said, uh, oh Luke, one of our uh, reporters, Phil and Weather Guys, says uh, floss. Hopefully that's oh. not a floss. Oh. Gross. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, that's gross. Guys, you got, you got a floss. Come on. <laughs> At okay. least Don't once every anyone. 10 years, yeah. 10 years. Uh, what about you? Did you have a guess? See, I was going to say... Um, Oh God! I don't even know what I was going to say. I like the going yeah. on a date, though. Okay. Over, over. Yeah, you know. Well, that's sad. So that could be even for married <laughs> couples. Maybe you forget to go on dates, right? Yes. You've been married too long. You got to keep that. I've heard we got to keep nope. that in the routine. No, so. let me send a message to all those married men watching. Yeah, go on a date with your go wife, guys. Date. All right. Come on, or yeah. or your significant other, whatever it is. Or if you're not married yet, yeah, just get yeah. on some dates. You got to socialize, Make right? Make people feel special. That's right. Come Raylene on. says, "Gone swimming." Okay. Yeah, maybe you don't like to don the bathing suit. Uh, or you just want to stick your feet in the water. It's yeah. going to be a hot one. You yeah, need if you don't today. like wearing your swimsuit, come swim with me, guys. There it's going to be fun. We'll it's paddle be board. Fun. <laughs> don't worry about what you look like. Just go get cool. Have some fun. Yeah, there you go. That's why we live here. All right, take it a vacation, Bob. Oh, uh, Bob, you need yes. to go on a vacation. Yes, Hopefully that you're not speaking for yourself. Yeah, even if it's a staycation. Sarah just had one, right? I did, yeah. yeah I was going to say, stay home. you just got to do what you got to do, guys. Take that's care right. of yourselves. All that's right. that's really it. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your community. All right, let's get going. Uh, if you do have any guesses, you still have a chance. Guess on our Facebook and Twitter page, and then we will have your answer coming up right before CBS This Morning. Still to come on CBS 2 News, an airplane bursting into flames after a rough landing. A look at what went wrong as investigators sent out to uncover more later this morning. All right, 545 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Local forecast. This one for Nissa. Uh, temperatures uh, in the western part of the valley. Yeah, far western part of the Treasure Valley. 93 degrees today. It's going to be a toasty one uh, across the board. But uh, Nissa, 93. Light wind, 61 tomorrow. Some more uh, winds expected tomorrow. A little bit breezy. Sunshine is going to continue in Nissa, but will fall to about 89 for the high on Thursday. Thank you, Nate. A plane caught fire shortly after a landing in Miami Tuesday evening. Now three people were sent to the hospital with minor injuries. A team of investigators from Washington headed there this morning to investigate exactly what happened. Now CBS's Mike, Matt Piper has that story. A passenger plane caught fire shortly after touching down at Miami International Airport when the front landing gear collapsed. More than 120 people were on board. Three people went to the hospital with minor injuries. I saw Ryan, I jumped and I, I thought it was going to explode. Paola Garcia describes the terrifying moments of uncertainty. They start to landing, but it, it like they couldn't, like the wheels were broken, I don't know. And it was like doing like this. We thought that it was going to like roll over. Roll over. Yeah, actually. Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine Cava, who was flying into Miami International Airport at the time, says firefighters arrived within a minute. The plane landed, apparently a tire burst, and then it went back up and came back down and the the landing was so hard that the entire landing apparatus was destroyed. The MD-82 jetliner is from Red Air, a new low-cost carrier based in the Dominican Republic. That's also where the flight originated from. The National Transportation Safety Board says a team will arrive Wednesday to investigate the incident. Matt Piper, CBS News. Now, after touching down in Miami, the International Airport, when the front landing gear collapsed. It looks like there were quite a few injuries. Now we will continue with this, but let's take a look on September 7th. American Airlines are going to end their service to at least three cities due to a pilot shortage. Now the company will stop flying to Ithaca and New York, as well as Toledo, Ohio. Now, according to several reports, including one from USA Today, American will stop flying to Dupique, Iowa. Now, a spokesperson for American says the company has 100 regional planes on the ground that it can't fly because there aren't enough regional pilots. Now, most are expected to travel by road this summer despite rising gas prices. Let's take a look this morning here in Idaho. The average is now 520 a gallon. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will be Costco. It lists the stations in both Boise and Nampa at about 505 a gallon. If you're headed out of state, don't expect the pain at the pump to be any better. Averages in both Washington, Oregon and Nevada are over 550 a gallon.
Oh, that's a little hard to swallow. <laughs> it's, yeah, no, it definitely is a little stomach rough out ache there. Almost. Yeah, I was gonna say. So maybe uh, uh, with the temperatures we're seeing, yeah, try to try to stay cool if you are going to be outside yeah. and maybe biking, trying to not use your car. Yeah, or <laughs> if you're gonna go out, maybe go a little earlier as well with temperatures yeah. climbing in the afternoon to uh, yeah, pretty toasty uh, highs as well. So mm -hmm. hey, this morning it's comfortable though. This is when you want to get outside, enjoy some of these uh, overnight lows. 58 Meridian, 52 Caldwell. Good morning to you. 57 in Boise. Uh, uh, temperatures in our mountain valleys, yet we're still cold in Stanley, 32 degrees. Good morning, 40 Sun Valley and 45 in Haley, 53 Twin Falls. Sarah mentioned the, yeah, the heat. Uh, maybe you want to uh, just use your own two feet to get around. Just bring lots of water, sunscreen, of course, if you're going to be out and about today. Uh, with temperatures near 91 with the sunshine we're going to be seeing. In fact, there's really not much, if any, cloud cover in the forecast as we get into next week. Uh, we are going to drop temperatures a little bit Thursday, Friday. There's a disturbance that's going to be north of us clipping us with some northwest flow, some breezy winds in the valley, temperatures uh, moderating as well to near average temperatures on Friday. As we get into Saturday, Sunday, it's going to be a scorcher into next week. Temperatures back in the mid 90s, so hottest temperatures of the season so far. Sunday, Monday could hit the century mark in some of the valley, expecting about 99 for Boise, 98 on Tuesday. So boy, now that summer officially started yesterday with solstice, Mother Nature's really laying down the hammer with the heat here in southern Idaho. 77 in the mountains uh, with uh, sunshine today. Comfortable temperatures in the mountain valleys all the way through Friday. Some breezy winds possible tomorrow, Thursday. One thing to note, Thursday afternoon, the southern mountain ranges, the Oahis, uh, southern highland areas could see some thunder showers form as monsoonal moisture just clips our far southern regions uh, into Thursday uh, night, Friday morning. And then on Saturday, 78, 83 on Sunday, Temperatures in the mid 80s Monday and Tuesday next week. So not record heat, but certainly getting toasty out there uh, in the mountain valleys as well. Pretty warm, but might be a nice uh, perfect, I think, temperature range next week with just how chilly some of the water is up at Payette, Cascade Lake, those, those areas. So we'll take the warm temperatures. <laughs> yeah, we got to work on warming up those lakes. Maybe yeah. not too much, though, snow melt, but, yes. but Still yeah. seeing that chilly water come into the reservoirs as well. So yeah. our focus now <clears throat> is on our mountains and getting into some of those lakes. That's right. All right. Well, at least this morning it is Wednesday, so let's take a look at your morning commute outside there this morning. CBS 2 News and News Talk KVOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, everything is looking good on this Wednesday morning. We made it, folks, halfway there. Sun is starting to shine out there this morning as well, but it should be smooth sailing. So when you do get in the car, turn on Newstop KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, Meridian Dairy Days. It starts tonight. A look ahead at the event all week long. The United Way Book Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. 54 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Books are the key to learning about the world around you. And yet only one child out of 300 in low income families owns a book. That's where the seventh annual Children's Book Bash can help. This is really United Way's way of bringing the community together to make sure that books can continue to be loved, but more importantly, so that children have access to books. Yeah, United Way volunteers were repairing and cleaning books, getting them ready to be given to children right here in the Treasure Valley. And still, more volunteers are needed to deliver books next week. Now, if you'd like to help, you can sign up. Just head to IdahoNews.com. Well, you may be getting less bang for your buck this July 4th. The entire fireworks industry seeing costs explode by as much as about 35 percent. Now, shops say fireworks from China are stuck in port because of food and other goods are a higher priority. Not only that, but shipping costs have also more than tripled since last year. Shipping went up. It went from 8500 to 40000 just for a shipping container. Yikes, that is a jump. Now, as it gets closer to Independence Day, many options may not be available. Now, some smaller stores say they're having trouble stocking up on popular items, even things like sparklers. Well, Meridian Dairy Days is getting started tonight. A little switch of gears. It's a celebration of Meridian's agricultural heritage. Well, I think this is, a, you know, one of those uh, uh, days that the community can get together. We kind of celebrate the history of Dairy Days. And I know for people that uh, have just moved there, they wonder why Dairy Days, you know, they're 
There's not very many dairies around anymore, but this used to be the dairy center. Yeah, a far, little farm to table action teaching people how that works. Dairy Days kicks off with the Princess Pageant. It's at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. The Farm Show and Carnival open Thursday for Family Night. The parade, it's Saturday evening. You can watch it live on Channel 2.2. That's the Treasure Valley CW. Our coverage starts at 530. And still to come, lots of headlines. We'll see you back here at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, police in Uvalde, Texas, facing more criticism for their response to a school shooting last month. Why officials believe they had the manpower to act sooner than they did. Plus, Caldwell welcoming a new police chief. What he says his goal will be as he gets ready to step into the new role. And fighting fire with weeds? The plant crews in Idaho are hoping will help combat fire danger. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning and thank you for joining us. A beautiful live shot from downtown Boise on this June 22nd, 2022. It is Wednesday, a beautiful start to our day and Mother Nature really kicking off summer on the right note. Temperatures going to be heating up today and a chance for triple digits later on next week. Nate. Yeah, we've got wow. uh, summer <laughs> kicking off, right? Yeah. Uh, essentially in full swing now with uh, summer officially starting yesterday. Uh, another angle, this is of course one of my favorite views from the top of Tamarack Summit looking at uh, the sunshine that we're going to be seeing throughout the morning. The clear skies uh, temperature wise we're pretty comfortable, pretty typical for this time of morning in the 50s for a lot of the valley dipped into the upper 40s for Mountain Home. Good morning to you. 43 in McCall. So yeah, not too bad. Still some of the snow up on top of Tamarack that you can see there. So we are still seeing snow melt into the reservoirs. We tend to hit peak uh, storage capacity and peak snow melt around this time of year. So we're seeing that happen right now, especially with hot temperatures today. We also see sometimes Times this time of year, typically the monsoonal flow start to get swept up from the south as a high pressure ridge kind of parks itself over the Great Basin. The Four Corner region brings up some subtropical moisture. There's a threat, at least for the far southern mountain areas. Models are hinting at tomorrow could see possibly a shower or thunderstorm over some of the Oahis. Today we're quiet. Tomorrow, again, mainly in those southern mountain areas, possibly a few thunder showers. The Magic Valley included in that. We're going to see clear skies, if not mostly clear skies and breezy winds tomorrow. So today, get out and enjoy the sunshine. Try to stay cool, of course, with temperatures getting toasty, 91. That's not record high or anything. Of course, this time of year, we can definitely be in the 90s, but normally we're 84. We're going to be in the 80s already around lunchtime. Sarah. Who heating up quick. All right. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking good. Volumes are low this morning, moving on along this Wednesday. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. We begin this morning in Texas, where the head of the Texas Department of Public Safety is blasting the police response to the Uvalde mass shooting. He says there were enough armed officers in the school hallway three minutes after the gunman walked into the school. Meanwhile, police waited seven 74 minutes before breaching what is now said to be an unlocked door. The only thing stopping a hallway of dedicated officers from in room 111 and 112 was the on-scene commander who decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. In Uvalde Tuesday, the city council voted unanimously against giving Uvalde Police Chief Arredondo, who is a council member, a leave of absence from appearing at public meetings. Well, in the meantime, Senate negotiators introduced a gun safety bill that they say can pass this week with bipartisan support. Now, it would toughen some federal gun laws and provide billions of dollars for both school safety and mental health programs. Ten Republicans say they'll vote for a bill based on that framework. Legislators hope to have the bill signed into law by President Biden before they break for recess on July 4th. Here in the Treasure Valley, Caldwell has a new police chief. 
Rex Ingram says he's looking forward to bringing a new perspective to the department and leading it through a challenging time. He says his goal is to restore the community's trust. I would tell those folks that help is on the way, that I need to come in and, and really evaluate what systems are working, what systems are not working, and put people, put the right people in the right places to make a difference and to really collaborate with the community. One officer has been indicted by the feds. That's Joseph Hoadley. He's accused of using excessive force and then lying to cover it up. Now, the last chief, Frank Wyatt, retired amid the FBI investigation into the police department. Ingram starts his new role at the start of next month. A high school student is trying to make his mark by running for the Boise School Board. Now, Shiva Raj Bandari is a senior at Boise High School. He's already a part of student government, and now he's running to be a trustee. I think it's really important that there is a student on the school board. 14% of the largest districts in the country already have students on the school board, and so this wouldn't be a, a new thing. Um, and I'm confident that uh, the, the voting public also believes that there should be a student, a student representation on the school board. One of Shiva's main priorities, if elected, is to address mental health issues in the school district. Now, the school board election is set for September 6th. Well, as temperatures rise, so does our fire danger. And the Bureau of Land Management, they're actually using a plant in their fire preparation. Now, in some places, this plant is considered a harmful weed, but right here, it might just stop a fire. CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains. In the heat of the summer, sagebrush becomes highly flammable, but cheatgrass is the big problem. It's spread all over our public lands, and once it's dry, it burns fast. What happens is it leads to more fires starting just because of how easily it is to ignite the cheatgrass. And so once you have more fires starting, more brush is lost and the more cheatgrass comes in. This is why the Bureau of Land Management is creating unique fuel breaks using another species of plant. We've identified roadway systems um, and started uh, to put fuel brakes throughout this whole network of roads in order to create areas where uh, if a wildfire should occur, we can kind of keep that wildfire smaller and more com compartmentalized uh, amongst the road system. That plant is kochia. And we use forage kochia, uh, a plant that is stays green long uh, quite a while into the summer and is uh, pretty fire resistant. The BLM is planting kochia and fuel breaks that will eventually spread approximately 274 miles across Idaho. Between the front of the Danskin Mountain Range area and the, and the freeway uh, I-84, we've identified a network of road systems and implemented fuel breaks in those areas. So when we do have fires in that area, hopefully we'll be able to keep them smaller and to keep everybody safe and to get them put out. As temperatures rise, even the smallest spark can start a vegetation fire. So make sure your chains are secure on your car. Always maintain your brakes and don't drive onto dry grass or brush. Well, it has been a relatively quiet fire year here in Idaho, but that's not the case everywhere. The Edgewood Fire in San Mateo County, California, forced evacuations even injured a firefighter. Now, firefighters weren't getting any help from Mother Nature as temperatures, they soared into the 90s, even the low triple digits. So this is a very atypical day in San Mateo County. We are used to that kind of onshore flow with the fog that comes in in the late afternoon. So the thing that concerns us is until we get some, um, some either relative humidities that go up or some containment that goes around, uh, we feel as though the, the potential still there that the, this fire could grow. Crews say they saw flare-ups across the bay yesterday. You can even see in some of this video right here, one of the business owners taking matters into his own hands until firefighters showed up. Now, later this week, the potential for dry lightning strikes continues to be high. Well, in other news, St. Luke's wants to keep kids safe around the water this summer. They're once again giving money to Boise to provide free life jackets to our kiddos. They held a giveaway at Idaho River Sports yesterday. The director of Parks and Rec says since this began just five years ago, they've already given out a thousand life jackets. This isn't your old um, inner tube around the neck type of a uh, horse collar uh, type of life jacket. These are uh, state of the art, uh, the, the best life jackets we could find on the market that we're providing for kids. 
If you did miss yesterday's event, you can still go to Idaho River Sports. Just ask for a free kids life jacket. What a little cutie. Oh, I love that program too. How <laughs> great uh, to have the life jacket loaner program uh, on it's a amazing. lot of our waterways, but that, that of course you get to keep that one. So yeah, it's nice. Good. So either, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're at the water, you can see them. I mean, they're really marked anywhere yeah. or go to Idaho River Sports. They'll give you a free one. So either way, All right. easy stuff. Staying safe out there. Staying cool as well. That yes. water looks refreshing. You're going to need some of that today with the hot temperatures that are coming our way. Name of the game. Uh, here's a look at the highs today. So we are warming up uh, from yesterday by almost 10 degrees. We were in the 80s yesterday. It felt very nice, especially with the light winds, just lots of sunshine. Got pretty toasty out there. We're getting even hotter today with low 90s across the valley, 92 Mountain Home. 93 or so for Ontario, 91 in Boise, so kind of right in the middle along with Emmett, Caldwell, Nampa, 77 or so for McCall, so those mid-70s for some of the mountain valleys and 80 for Sun Valley, still pretty comfortable in our mountain areas and 89, so just shy of 90 for Twin later this afternoon. As far as the next weather maker goes, we do have, again, the hot temperatures today. Cooling off just a little bit Thursday, Friday. We have increasing northwest flow as the storm's going to pass well to the north of us. It's just going to channel some winds through. It should help keep a little bit of monsoon moisture that's creeping up from the south uh, out of the Treasure Valley. It should just clip some of the southern highland areas and the Magic Valley. So let's put it into motion for you. So we've got a ridge of high pressure to the south and east of us. As it does conjure up some of this moisture, uh, it does bubble up into southern Idaho. It looks like Thursday afternoon, evening hours. Could see a few spotty showers and storms as it moves up, but as it encounters that northwest flow from the passing storm system, it should help sweep it out of here by the end of the week. Just help moderate our temperatures a little bit because we're getting toasty today, as we mentioned. Dropping, though, tomorrow to 87, still warm, and just a nice day on Friday, an average day with 84 as expected. And then the next week, high pressure rebuilds along the west coast. That's going to drive temperatures up once again. Hotter temperatures, even from what we're seeing today, about 96 by Sunday. And models are hinting at possibly the century mark, if not 99, oh. Monday next week. So yeah. we're going to be bacon uh, outside <laughs> in the sun. And I'd like to eat some bacon, I guess, now that I said it that way. So yeah, always oh, like food. Don't get me started. Get it is too early this <laughs> yeah. morning, Nate. All right. All right. Well, as far as this morning, if you are heading out, very mild, but yeah, going to heat up quick. Yeah, so certainly going to be a scorcher out there. Be ready. Yeah, put on some sunscreen. Make sure you're hydrating. Let's take a live look out there because everything is moving along this morning. Uh, yeah, supposed to be a beautiful day out there. Let's get a check of what's happening with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hey, Ron, good morning. Good morning. Traffic on I-84 doing fine even in the construction zone at uh, Caldwell, Nampa. Moving fine. Don't forget, though, if you're headed west, uh, you won't be able to take the I-84 westbound exit to Franklin Road. The 29 exit takes you to Highway 2026, basically. So uh, no exiting there from westbound I-84. That'll be in place for about the next six weeks. Reminder on that. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. Important reminders there. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS News this morning, parts of Yellowstone ready to reopen how people are preparing. But the rest of Yellowstone will need some time before it's ready. How long and how much it may take to completely restore the park. Hey, and don't forget about our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 150 million of these are sold in America each and every year between May and July. That answer is American flags. Yeah, hope you're shining them bright as we head into Independence Day. It is close. Now, let's take a look at today's question of the day. In a new survey, 7% of people say they haven't done this in more than 10 years, a decade. All right, folks, what is it? All right, time is now 6.15 on your Wednesday. Welcome back, local forecast. This one for Idaho City, looking at temperatures about 85 degrees. Should be a gorgeous day uh, up in Idaho City. Lots of sunshine. Uh, we dropped to 52 tonight, staying mostly clear. Now tomorrow still going to be a nice and warm day. We do have a little bit of a breeze, I think, tomorrow. And temperatures do fall a couple degrees to 83 for the high. Getting toasty. Thank you, Nate. Well, Yellowstone National Park is partially reopening this morning after being closed for more than a week following historic flooding. Now, Kelly Vaughn from our Sinclair sister station, she's in West Yellowstone, Montana, as the gateway communities and tourists prepare for the park to reopen.
Locals tell me this past week it has been like a ghost town, but it is finally starting to pick up as tourists are ready to get inside the park. But remember, only the southern half of the park will reopen. So to reduce capacity, they're using an alternating license plate system. So only cars with plates ending in an even number can get into the park on Wednesday. We're going to go scope it out. Holly Claiborne and her family came all the way from Albany, Kentucky, and they are prepared for the park's new alternating license plate system. I requested an even <laughs> from the rental company. Business owners are as excited as the tourists for the park to reopen. Sergey Plesko is a manager of three businesses in West Yellowstone. He says most of the local businesses hire students from overseas to work for the summer. And everybody has promised contracts and jobs and they have to offer hours. So uh, it's a good thing that the park is reopening tomorrow. Yeah. Every summer in Yellowstone is different, but he's hoping it could be a busy one, especially since the park is celebrating its 150th anniversary. Now, it won't be long until most of the northern loop of Yellowstone is open as well. That's set to happen in two weeks, months earlier than expected, after the Federal Highway Administration gave Yellowstone $50 million to make repairs. Reporting in West Yellowstone, I'm Kelly Vaughn. Back to you. Thank you, Kelly. Well, Yellowstone officials say it could take years to rebuild the national park and could cost around a billion dollars. Officials say they are still looking at the scope of the damage, but so far the most damage it seems to be the road, especially the highway connecting the park's north entrance to its office. Now the goal will be construction with less impact to the park, limiting that season from spring thaw until first snowfall. But officials say rerouting the road could be a better chance to protect the Gardner River, fish and other species that live there. Yeah, habitat comes first always. Oh, I like that, especially yeah, with the National Park. Uh, crazy to see how much flooding that they did have over that period of time, but I'm glad they're able to reopen at least parts, parts of the park for visitors because it's, it's such yeah. a beautiful park and needs to be visited and reminded of just how awesome the planet is, right? Yeah, no, it's a, I mean, it really <laughs> yeah. is. It's an amazing place to be able to go. So thankful they're, you know, at least able to reopen yeah. a little so, bit. So. And yeah, hopefully they can, yeah. It's always a little, a little cooler in Yellowstone as well. About yes, it is. Or so. you might well, need you're going to cool. want that today. I don't know about <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, but. Want to find the cool spots, maybe go up in elevation if you don't want the 90s just yet, but we do have a scorcher of a day in store. Today outside, beautiful start to this morning. This is yeah. the city of Boise air quality camera. So yeah, we can see uh, sun is up right now. That image is delayed. This is a six o'clock image uh, of the Treasure Valley. Yeah, we've got clear skies. Uh, high pressure is going to generate clear conditions throughout the day today. Temperatures 57 degrees, winds, yeah, light, southeast winds at nine miles an hour, maybe a little breezy, but we're expecting light winds to continue throughout the day today. Nothing concerning there. It's just the heat that we're going to start to see now that we're officially, of course, in summer with it kicking off yesterday. 91 degrees for the high today. A weak storm system passes by north of us. We'll still see clear skies, if not mostly clear skies, but it will channel a little bit of wind through the Treasure Valley out of the northwest, and that'll help drop our temperatures a little bit as well to 84 by Friday, so that's still average. And then we turn the heat way up into next week. In fact, we're looking at hottest temperatures of the season so far, and maybe our first triple-digit day of the season by Monday, forecasting right now 99 degrees. Still far enough out, we could certainly change by a degree or several degrees by the time we get there. But it should be a big warm up into next week with temperatures peaking on Monday, 98 on Tuesday. So just a hot weekend, even hotter temperatures to kick off the next work week. So yeah, this will be a good test run, I guess, today for some of the air conditioners. And we've had a couple of 90 degree days already, but we're gonna have a lot of those moving forward. 77 in the mountains, comfortable temperatures. Yeah, you can always beat the heat and head to the mountains by a good 10 degrees uh, as far as cooler temperatures. We typically see some breezy winds Thursday, Friday, low 70s uh, for high, so average temperatures, upper 70s on Saturday, and then we're going to be in the 80s, so yeah, warm, feeling pretty nice out there, help warm up some of those cold lake temperatures, the water's always a little chilly, of course, up in the mountain valleys, but hey, we'll take the 80s, might feel really nice uh, with the sunshine early next week. Oh gosh, that reminds me. We, I grew up in North Idaho, and oh, okay. we were we were not allowed to swim until actually like mid July. Mid July, yeah, because <laughs> it's so cold. The cold. water would be. Yeah, folks in Southeast oh. Idaho, you know Bear Lake. That's yep. common because we're from. We used to vacation there all the time. The water is <laughs> always cold, but July and August it's manageable. Exactly. Yeah. We'll get we'll get there, guys. Wet suits, we're in Wet it suits together. dry suits. What are we gonna do to get in the water? Just want to enjoy it. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a toasty day yeah. today. Let's take a live look outside this morning. It is beautiful, and everything is looking good. But let's get that official check from Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hey, Ron, how's it looking? Hi, uh, yeah, other spots besides the uh, camera shots we've got for you. Doing fine. So far, volume not that heavy. Don't have the, the merge slowdowns really kicking in quite yet. Meridian or Nampa, per se. 
Uh, things good in the construction zone of uh, ID4 and the construction area of Highway 44 between Highway 16 and Linder. The widening continues down to one lane each direction using what would be the eastbound side of the highway. Uh, no build up through the lane restrictions at this point. That'll kick in a little later. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, preparing for new variants of COVID. What's being done to protect you? And later, keeping kids safe this summer, where you can go pick up a free life jacket. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 624 AM, welcome back. The newest variant of coronavirus could have us headed for a future surge. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares what's being done to offer us protection against it. Hey there, everybody. So you just recovered from BA2 or BA3. What does it mean for BA4 or 5 as these newer variants start to move into circulation and replace the early strains? Here's what infectious disease specialists say you can expect. First up, expect new guidance on possibly a fourth booster for all in the coming weeks. These newer BA4 and 5 variants appear to be just different enough from the early Omicron strains that the U.S. Surgeon General said today. We are certainly looking at uh, the possibility of a, a booster shot in the fall for the broader population. FDA vaccine advisors are scheduled to meet on these updated COVID-19 vaccines on June 28th. Right now, the current fourth shot is only recommended for those 50 and older four months after their most recent shot. Second thing to expect from these newer subvariants, according to Cedarville University's Dr. Zach Jenkins, is that if you get BA4 or 5, you aren't likely to be hospitalized from it. Omicron seems to have, in a way, almost neutered some of the uh, capabilities of COVID at large. Dr. Jenkins says we all likely now have what's called population-based immunity, which means when it comes to BA4 and 5. It may not protect against symptomatic infection, but there seems to be some correlation with protecting against severe disease. Finally, expect that the army of ways to stop you from getting sick, from antiviral pills to mask recommendations, are still going to be recommended as these newer variants take over. And truth be told, as this tends to move through the population, there are a lot of people in lots of groups. It's hard to make general statements about what the best thing might be for everyone. This is one of the reasons protection always considered a layering process. It's never just one single step. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Well, parents may have some questions about getting their children under five vaccinated for coronavirus. Now, some parents worry younger children may be more vulnerable to side effects of the vaccine. Studies show they are typically mild and can include fever, pain at the injection site, fatigue, and irritability, irritability irri yes, as whether the child could suffer the rare side effect of heart inflammation seen in some adolescents and adults. Doctors say there hasn't been any cases reported throughout all of the vaccine studies. Still to come on CBS 2 News, a new gun safety bill making its way through Congress. How soon it could be passed. And a look at our primetime lineup tonight. Join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here's a look. This morning on CBS 2 News, police in Uvalde, Texas, facing more criticism for their response since the school shooting last month. Why officials believe they had the manpower to act sooner than they did. Plus, Caldwell welcoming a new police chief. What he says his goal will be as he gets ready to step into the new role. And fighting fire with weeds? The plant crews in Idaho are hoping will help combat fire danger. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. <laughs> All right, folks, happy Wednesday. Let's start off the day with those uh, frosted weather waves checking in on the forecast as you step outside early. Yeah, you can see the sunshine out already this morning. Temperatures uh, in the 50s, at least for Boise. We had uh, Mountain Home dip into the upper 40s. 63, though, around 8 o'clock. Clear skies are going to continue. Taking a look at clouds and radar again. Quiet weather here in Idaho. We've got some systems passing north of us. 
and we're tracking a little bit of monsoonal moisture. In fact, uh, quite a bit for areas in New Mexico, some heavy or even moderate uh, pockets of rain there. But with high pressure in place over the Great Basin or the Four Corner region, typically this time of year, we tend to see some of that monsoonal flow get swept up into south or southwestern and uh, even some portions of Idaho uh, in uh, the U.S. So we're looking at uh, pretty quiet conditions continuing today with high pressure in place. A few clouds over some of the southern mountain areas later this evening. But on Thursday, models are continuing to show a little bit of that monsoonal moisture generating some potential showers, maybe some thunderstorm activity as we get into Thursday evening. The Magic Valley, of course, being included in this northwest flow should keep all that moisture out of the Treasure Valley. However, temperatures are going to moderate a little bit more tomorrow into Friday after a hot day today with that northwest flow as well. So again, sunshine and clear skies as you head out. Maybe you need to grab the paddleboard, the kayak, some way to stay cool with temperatures about 80 degrees at lunchtime. Low 90s are going to be picked up uh, this afternoon. It's going to be a scorcher out there considering how cool temperatures have been this week. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, it's going to be a toasty one out there. Make sure you're hydrating. And when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we do begin this morning in Texas, where the head of the Texas Department of Public Safety, they're blasting the police response to the Uvalde mass shooting. They say there were enough armed officers in the school hallway three minutes after the gunman walked into the school. Police, however, waited 74 minutes before breaching what is now said to be an unlocked door. The only thing stopping a hallway of dedicated officers from in room 111 and 112 was the on-scene commander who decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. In Uvalde Tuesday, the city council voted unanimously against giving Uvalde Police Chief Arredondo, who is a council member, a leave of absence from appearing at public meetings. In the meantime, the Senate negotiators introduced a gun safety bill. They say it can pass within a week with bipartisan support. Now, it would toughen some federal gun laws and provide billions for school safety as well as mental health programs. Ten Republicans say they'll vote for a bill based on that framework. Legislators hope to have the bill signed into law by President Biden before they break for recess on July 4th. Well, here in the Treasure Valley, Caldwell has a new police chief. He says he's looking forward to bringing a new perspective to the department and leading it through a challenging time. He says his goal is to restore community trust. I would tell those folks that help is on the way, that I need to come in and, and really evaluate what systems are working, what systems are not working, and put people, put the right people in the right places to make a difference and to really collaborate with the community. Now, one officer has been indicted by the federal government. That's Joseph Hoadley. He's accused of using excessive force and then lying to cover it up. Now, the last chief, Frank Wyatt, retired amid the FBI investigation into his department. Ingram, however, starts his new role at the start of next month. A high school student is trying to make his mark by running for the Boise School Board. Now, this is Shiva Rajbandari. He's a senior at Boise High School. He's already a part of student government, and now he's running to be a trustee. I think it's really important that there is a student on the school board. 14% of the largest districts in the country already have students on the school board, and so this wouldn't be a, a new thing. Um, and I'm confident that uh, the, the voting public also believes that there should be a student, a student representation on the school board. One of Shiva's main priorities, if elected, is to address mental health issues in his school district. Now, the school board election is set for September 6th. And as temperatures rise, so does fire danger. The fire, they're the Bureau of Land Management. They're using a plant in their fire preparations. Now, in some places, this plant, it's considered actually a harmful weed. But here, it just might stop a fire. CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains. In the heat of the summer, sagebrush becomes highly flammable, but cheatgrass is the big problem. It's spread all over public lands, and once it's dry, it burns fast. What happens is it leads to more fires starting just because of how easily it is to ignite the cheatgrass. And so once you have more fires starting, more brush is lost and the more cheatgrass comes in. This is why the Bureau of Land Management is creating unique fuel breaks using another species of plant. 
we've identified roadway systems um, and started uh, to put fuel brakes throughout this whole network of roads in order to create areas where uh, if a wildfire should occur, we can kind of keep that wildfire smaller and more com compartmentalized uh, amongst the road system. That plant is kochia. And we use forage kochia, uh, a plant that is stays green long uh, quite a while into the summer and is uh, pretty fire resistant. The BLM is planting kochia in fuel breaks that will eventually spread approximately 274 miles across Idaho. Between the front of the Danskin Mountain Range area and the and the freeway uh, I-84, we've identified a network of road systems and implemented fuel breaks in those areas. So when we do have fires in that area, hopefully we'll be able to keep them smaller and to keep everybody safe and to get them put out. As temperatures rise, even the smallest spark can start a vegetation fire. So just make sure your chains are secure on your car if you are using them. Maintain your brakes and don't drive onto dry grass or brush. Well. Switching gears now, St. Luke's wants to keep your kids safe around the water this summer. Once again, it's giving money to Boise to provide free life jackets to our kiddos. They held a giveaway at Idaho River Sports yesterday. The director of Parks and Rec says since they began five years ago, they've already given out over a thousand life jackets. This isn't your old um, inner tube around the neck type of uh, horse collar uh, type of life jacket. These are uh, state of the art, uh, the, the best life jackets we could find on the market that we're providing for kids. Now, if you did miss yesterday's event, you can still go to Idaho River Sports. All you have to do is ask for a free children's life jacket. Yes, and to note that as well, they have them around some of the swimming areas um, in the city, yeah. but but it's cool that you can even just go and get your own. Idaho's, yeah, Life Jacket nice. Loaner Program, so it's very okay. cool to see that <clears throat> they're trying to keep us all safe, even if we're not being or doing our part to keep ourselves safe and, bring, safe and bringing one in the first place, right? No, exactly. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's nice to be able to, you know, uh, yeah. being, being a parent, you forget a lot of things sometimes, so it's nice to be able to have that. Yeah. You got to pack the whole house when you leave, so you forget the life <laughs> the jacket. Sometimes house. that's the main thing you forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely going to be wanting to hit the water, so those life jackets are going to be Yeah, some of that video looked enticing yeah. near the waterways. Yesterday was a warm day. Today we're, we're getting hot. In fact, Posting. hot temperatures in store for the valley with low 90s in store for all areas. In fact, 91 Boise, Nampa, Caldwell, Emmett, about 92 for Mountain Home. Should hit about uh, 94 Harper, so comfortable temperatures. You can see those in our mountain areas, about 77 in McCall, mid 70s in Stanley, 80 Sun Valley, Twin Falls, just shy of 90 degrees today. Our next weather maker, we do have again the hot temperatures expected today. We get clipped by a storm system Thursday, Friday. We'll stay clear, but we have breezy winds and temperatures falling back down to average highs. Normally we're in the mid 80s and then we crank up the heat again this weekend. The only caveat uh, to this is not mentioned is there's a little bit of monsoonal moisture that should impact some of our southern mountain areas as we get into Thursday. So you can see some of that moisture coming up from the south kind of bubbles up around this ridge of high pressure, which is rotating clockwise. And then as we get into tomorrow, by the uh, late afternoon evening, models are hinting that we could see some of that stormy weather, some possible showers and thunderstorms form uh, over some of the southern highland areas in the Magic Valley and in southeastern Idaho. The northwest flow generated by that storm system up north of us should help keep that moisture away from the Treasure Valley. And we'll just see the breezy winds with those falling temperatures. So here's kind of the temperature trend. Yeah, we're pretty toasty out there with 91 today. Falling to 84 on Friday, so that's average. We're still at or above average for the next five days. Getting hot again on Saturday, 91. Then we're cranking up that uh, extra high heat burner, I guess, to 96 Sunday. And we could even hit 99, maybe 100 on Monday next week. So I've noticed, maybe you've noticed as well, we're starting to dry out here in the valley. My lawn, I've had it on really low watering cycles because of all the moisture we had in the spring. Starting to see a few brown spots pop up. So. I have to crank up a little bit more of the watering cycle with all the heat we're seeing and the sunshine. Yeah, I was going to say my garden's going to need a little extra watering. A little extra drink. Yep, sure just with your, as, along with yourself. Good news <laughs> or good rule of thumb for yourself. Bring an extra bottle of water today as well. Yeah, water your plants, water yourself. Hey, <laughs> all you right, go. let's take a look outside. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's going on out there from Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hey, Ron. Hi there. Uh, well, the uh, sun glare can be an issue depending on the angle of your drive. You can see in some of the camera shots, sun already an issue. Pop it up, so careful with that. Getting ready to get out the door. And elsewhere, uh, well, aside from the uh, sun, we're doing okay. The merge areas in Meridian really have yet to even uh, fully kick in. Uh, not much going on. Highway 44, the construction area between Highway 16 and Linder. Holding up okay in the lane restriction area there. Highway 2026, 
decent at some of those typical hot spots like Middleton Road or Star Road. No buildups quite yet either. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. All right, folks, time for our favorite part of the day. It is question of the day. And the question is, in a new survey, 7% of people say they've done this. They haven't done this in more than 10 years. Okay. Whew. Okay, I was 7%. thinking about it. Small amount of people, and yeah. it's because I just made my appointment. But what about the dentist? Oh, I hope that uh, I hope that well, everybody needs to go to the dentist. Know. It's just good to have good dental hygiene. But yeah, if it's been a while, uh, we are fortunate enough. We go every six months. I, I think people dread the dentist. I love the dentist because I love how clean <laughs> your teeth feel afterward, right? Yeah, you can't beat that. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, but I would imagine yeah, there's certainly could be seven percent of people that haven't been in ten years. Yeah, for just sure. a just small amount. Cost. Yeah. Uh, uh, I said jokingly earlier, maybe been to the gym or exercised. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, you've exercised <laughs> a little bit more than that. Oh, Hillary, yeah, maybe you keep your car oh. for a while. You haven't bought a new car. I like that, uh, Hillary, in yeah. In 10 years, yeah. Mine usually stay around at least that long. I've got an 07, so yeah, mine's been okay. around for almost two decades. Oh my gosh, Yeah, it's crazy <laughs> I guess I've got about. five more years, but yeah, it's been a while. All right, well, Sally says, fl flew in a plane. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, some people just don't don't like them at all. They'll mm. just drive or bus wherever they go, huh? See, I've always wanted to be a pilot, so oh, okay. I love. You'll definitely fly. Love. All right, all right slept in 10 years, Danielle yeah, slept in late. late. Danielle, like, really missed out on that morning uh, clock in, huh? Oh, simple pleasures. That's, it's devastating for our shift. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if you don't show up for work, it's like, wait, what's <laughs> happening? So, yeah, that, I have done that once. Yeah, Maybe no, twice. Twice? Yeah. Once. Twice. I can't remember. <laughs> At least once. I got an alarm clock from my boss the one time I did do it. So. Oh, I love that. Oh, my gosh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Super big letters, really bright. <laughs> yep, make sure you get you up in the morning. All right, yep. guys. Well, I hope you are up and bright this morning. If you do think you know the answer to our question, still a little bit of time. Guess on our Facebook and Twitter page, and we'll read the guess right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, an airplane burst into flames after a rough landing. A look at what went wrong. All right, 645 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Local forecast. This one for Nyssa. Temperatures in the western part of the valley, about 93 today. We're all getting toasty warm. Tonight we will drop to 61 degrees. Uh, plan on sunny skies continuing into Thursday, but temperatures are going to fall about 4 degrees. 89 is expected to be the high. Not too bad. Thank you, Nate. Well, a plane caught fire shortly after a landing in Miami Tuesday evening. Three people were sent to the hospital with only minor injuries, but a team of investigators from Washington headed down there this morning to investigate just what happened. CBS's Matt Piper has that story. A passenger plane caught fire shortly after touching down at Miami International Airport when their front landing gear collapsed. More than 120 people were on board. Three people went to the hospital with minor injuries. I started running and I jumped and I, I thought it was going to explode. Paola Garcia describes the terrifying moments of uncertainty. They started to landing, but it, it, like they couldn't, like the wheels were broken, I don't know. And it was like doing like this. We thought that it was going to like roll over. Roll over. Yeah, actually. Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine Cava, who was flying into Miami International Airport at the time, says firefighters arrived within a minute. The plane landed, apparently a tire burst, and then it went back up and came back down. And the, the landing was so hard that the entire landing apparatus was destroyed. The MD-82 jetliner is from Red Air, a new low-cost carrier based in the Dominican Republic. That's also where the flight originated from. The National Transportation Safety Board says a team will arrive Wednesday to investigate the incident. Matt Piper, CBS News. Mm. Well, starting on September 7th, American Airlines will end service to at least three cities due to a pilot shortage. Now, the company will stop flying to Ithaca, Islip, New York, as well as Toledo, Ohio. Now, according to several reports, including one from USA Today, American will stop flying to Dubuque, Iowa. Now, a spokesperson for American says the company has 100 regional planes on the ground. It can't fly because there just aren't enough regional pilots. All right, Nate, sign us up.
<laughs> right? Get us out. Fly us, us away. <laughs> we'll take you on out. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's rough. That's rough. <laughs> it rough. can be rough. Yeah. <laughs> That's rough. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't enjoy getting there, but I do enjoy the vacation once you're there, right? So that's oh, always yeah. the worst part. So uh, talking about airlines and things. Hey, maybe you're going to fly uh, away from some of the heat today. It's yeah. getting you toasty out there. Temperatures this morning, yeah, not fleeting, though. They're uh, pretty comfortable, pretty welcoming as you head outside. 57 in Boise Meridian, 50 Caldwell, Parma, 50 degrees as well. We're looking at, uh, yeah, a nice, cozy, comfortable start to your morning. Up in the mountain valleys, we're in the 40s for McCall, even just 31 degrees in Stanley. Yeah, always chilly in the Stanley Basin. 39 in Sun Valley and 45 in Haley Twin Falls, 52. All of us heating up today, uh, a little bit above average. In fact, we're 91 today, 84 is average. Closer to average temperatures Thursday, Friday, a bit of a northwest flow will kick in and help drop our temperatures uh, down from the 90s. But high pressure amplifies again into the weekend. Temperatures rebound to 96 on Sunday. It's going to be a scorcher out there. 99 on Monday, maybe 100. We'll be watching that. Could be our first uh, triple digit day of the season, but certainly getting uh, sizzling hot into next week with those temperatures being 10 to 15 degrees above normal. 77 uh, in the mountains today, lots of sunshine, some breezy winds are expected Thursday, Friday. One thing to note, the southern highland areas, the southern Oahis, the Magic Valley does have a risk for some showers and thunderstorms today as, or excuse me, tomorrow on Thursday as some monsoonal moisture is going to creep up from the south. The northern mountains will stay dry and sunny. 72 on Friday, 78 Saturday. Very warm conditions into next week. In fact, should feel really nice, especially considering how cold some of the water temperatures are this time of year. So 86 on Monday, not too shabby. We'll take that from 99. So maybe you want to skip out on the Treasure Valley heat, head up to the Long Valley, which should be more comfortable. 85 Tuesday with sunny skies. Roland will be tracking all the changes to the forecast. He'll have those updates today at 4 o'clock right here on CBS2. Yeah, a toasty day, and maybe we we'll, might want to put that dog walk in the early morning <laughs> yeah. hours or a little bit later. Today. Yeah, especially <laughs> if we were talking about, uh, we went to the water park yesterday, the pavement gets really hot on your bare feet, so the paws on the asphalt, certainly not good news when you have temperatures in the 90s. It can be much hotter on those uh, pups, so yeah. get them out early. Think about our fur babies, guys. Right. All right, well, let's take a live <laughs> look outside this morning. It's already very sunny out there. Don't forget yeah. the sunglasses. Let's get a check of what's happening down there on the roads from <laughs> The News Talk Traffic Center's Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, how's it looking? Starting to get a little bit busier. Sun glare, a little bit of an issue, and volume on the increase. ID4, some of that crowded traffic showing up a little bit near 10 Mile Meridian Road, mainly. Not much through Nampa, last check, and uh, doing fine elsewhere, really. Volume is yet to uh, show up too much. Non freeway routes. 7 o'clock hour will mean busier traffic, and do be careful as you get out the door dealing with the uh, sun glare. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. We're walking on sunshine this Wednesday. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come this morning, Meridian Dairy Days kicking off tonight. A look ahead as the event begins. The United Way Book Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Books are the key to learning about the world around you. Yet only one child out of 300 in low-income families owns a single book. Now that's where the seventh annual Children's Book Batch can help. This is really United Way's way of bringing the community together to make sure that books can continue to be loved, but more importantly, so that children have access to books. That access is number one. Now United Way volunteers repaired, cleaned books, got them ready to be given to children right here in the Treasure Valley. Still, more volunteers are needed to deliver the books next week. If you'd like to help, you can sign up on IdahoNews.com. And Meridian Dairy Days kicks off tonight. It's a celebration of Meridian's agricultural heritage. Well, I think this is, uh, you know, one of those uh, uh, days that the community can get together. We kind of celebrate the history of Dairy Days, and I know for people that uh, have just moved here, they wonder why Dairy Days, you know, there, yeah. there's not very many dairies around anymore, but this used to be the Dairy Center. Yeah, celebrating our heritage. Now, Dairy Days, it kicks off with the Princess Pageant. That's at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. The Farm and Carnival starts Thursday with Family Day. 
There's animal shows, races, performances, more on Friday, and then we have the parade on Saturday. You can watch that on the Treasure Valley CW. That's channel 2.2. You're going to be there. That's all Sarah. It's the Sarah show on Saturday. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no, Brett Hunsager <laughs> is joining me, oh, but come by and say yeah. hi. Yeah, no. And let's switch it over because this is the part that I hate the most, Nate. It's yeah. because after, what is it, yeah. five years? Five, five yeah. years. You tried to sneak it in earlier. At I Channel 2. I, I did. I threw, I threw, I threw it, which you is off fine. the deep end a little earlier. Yeah, I'm just not great at saying, uh, saying goodbye. So, yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, kind of bittersweet for me. We've been in Idaho, my family and I. I've got three children for seven years. So, Idaho has essentially become home for us. We, uh, we are from Utah. Yeah. We've loved it here. We've had fa uh, friends that have become family. We've, I've loved my time here in the Treasure Valley. It's been five years. Sarah and I started, yeah. I think it's very similar times. Yes, so I very remember Sarah similar coming times. on board as well. And so we've had a great time. I, I think we've all grown a lot. Uh, I've really fallen in love with uh, the viewers, the area, the morning newscast, but we are going to part ways uh, today being my last show. Uh, we're going to go home. So that's, it was a really tough decision, honestly. It was, it's, uh, we've loved it here. We've loved uh, the friends and the, and the uh, community that we have met, uh, but uh, we did finally make the decision that we're going to go back home to Salt Lake, and I'm, I'm going to be joining the ABC station there uh, doing weekend weather initially, some fill-in and some reporting, and we're excited to see where the next chapter in our little book of yeah. life takes us. Uh, but again, we are sad to see uh, see us leave here. Uh, and again, it wasn't an, a super easy decision. Like, no. yeah, we're going. But no, we love it here. We've got great friends and family. And Sarah's been great to work with. I'm excited to see her kind of take the reins of the morning show and see where it goes. I know there's been a lot of changes the last few months, but uh, hang with us. There's lots of good people and good uh, morning newscasts to come. No, so stick it's, here. It is bittersweet, but Nate, yeah. you have been such a pleasure to work with, and I'm Thank so you. excited. So if you are in Utah, watch ABC4, you'll see this face All right. quite a bit. That's All right, right, Nate. Our question of the day, let's get to that answer. Gone to the dentist. Oh, you nailed it. With you <laughs> All right. Radio, News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next and watch for your next local